Niels, information today is spoken of by many scientists, not just in describing the world, but in being the most fundamental part of the world. As a theologian, how do you see information? First of all, I think it is amazing that we now have, uh, in a sense, a change of our worldview, uh, where so that we now are saying we live in an informational universe, a patterned universe, a structured universe, which is ever changing, which is act in a, that sense also a creative universe, a creative universe which is also hospitable to life mm -hmm. and intelligence. So I think it's a very, very interesting worldview that we are now embarking upon. Think about how it was earlier with, New with Newton, that the universe was like a clockwork. All elements had to be ordered, and God was then the great orderer who was sitting on, uh, outside the world and ordering things. And then think about the, the uh, Newtonian, sorry, the Einsteinian uh, worldview that came into being uh, uh, in, the, in the early 20th century, where we had the understanding that energy was the most fundamental thing. Mm -hmm. It's like everything is like an, an a steam engine. Uh, we, th we have had it also in Freud and so on. Everything is like a mechanical process where there's too much energy, so everything is compressed, and then we are just the outflow of such uh, en energy. Very deterministic. It's a very deterministic uh, worldview, uh, uh, as you say. And now we live in this in interesting informational worldview where we first have the, the creation of, of differences. So information may be defined as the differences that make a difference for the future universe. And in that sense, it begins very early already at, in the quantum world. We have a, a, a ceaseless production of difference, which then is blown up uh, some time in the cosmic uh, uh, process. So it's like cut, cut. But then if we go into the biological world, then we have a sort of a building up of structures. We have codes that instruct for further development. And we have also the, the incipient interest in having interest in oneself. That is, we, we, want, uh, uh, we have organisms that want to maintain their own existence. So all of this is derived from the concept of information uh, that is coming up from the most fundamental levels and being very creative and, and innovative as it, as it builds up. But it would seem that that pattern is something that doesn't need theology to enliven it. It no. seems to work quite well yes. Yes. without yeah. the wisdom of yeah. theologians. Well, of course, the point is that, that contemporary science needs, in a sense, to, to, not to exclude religion, but they need to bracket religion simply put it outside the parenthesis in order to understand the processes that are really going on there. But it seems to me that it's very easy to interpret the new informational uh, world picture uh, in religious terms, because this means that there is a divine logos, a sort of wisdom or pattern, and even a capacity for, for pattern formation that is going on in the midst of reality. And if we want to think that way, then God or Logos is not something that we put outside the world, as in Newton. Neither is it something which is just a, 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 an impersonal stream of, of energy, as in an Einsteinian world picture, but it's something which has to do with the maintenance of differences and also of the creation of resonance between the different parts. So help me with this concept of Logos, which comes from the first chapter of John in the New Testament. Yes, yes. And you see that Logos as somehow relating to this fundamental concept of information. How does that work? Well, first of all, I'm happy not to be the first one, because this is in a sense what already the old fathers of the church were, were saying. So Logos was not just a divine word spoken somewhere. It was not just Jesus, the Jesus figure as a historical person. It was simply a pervasive Logos that was everywhere and structured everything. But how do I then relate them? Well, I think that you can, from a scientific perspective, as I said, you don't need to embrace a specific religious interpretation of them. 
But I'm saying but if, that if you are, so to speak, in the other end, then you say, well, in a sense, this is a confirmation of a very old view, which is that structure and the structure and capacity is, is at the core of reality. And you've talked about giving understanding to information by understanding some of the religious tradition, even using the Trinitarian concept of God to understand the nature of reality in terms of, of, uh, of describing matter, in terms of, of mass and energy and information and sort of a, a Trinitarian view. Um, how can you help us understand it? It seems like a pretty metaphor, but is there yeah. more to it than that? I, I think, first of all, it is a metaphor. That is, I'm just saying that, the, that we are not just saying that, that mass is no more there or the energy is nowhere now information is everything uh, the point is actually that we have something that we have to take together so mass is something which is in a sense concentrated in uh, specific places and we have gravity gravitational forces that that uh, that is exerted by such mass concentration so it makes sense to talk about mm. mass and behind mass is a sort of a substrate a, a capacity for being able to form uh, to form uh, such uh, uh, mass concentrations and sometimes it's called called energy and uh, and then we have the fact that these has has patterns and these patterns are in a sense the channels that are important for explaining why things develop this way rather than that way and then it, i'm saying that in a sense the mass or the or the strop straight of reality is like the father and the energy is like uh, the holy spirit and the logos is like the uh, uh, the uh, the informational structures of the universe and this is in a sense an analogy and nothing but an analogy but the point is then that if that that what makes it theological so to speak is the insistence that here is something going on which goes beyond the mechanical expressions, which goes beyond the, the steam engine picture of reality. So in a sense, if the question, the big question is, is the universe like an engine or just a, a computer without any consciousness, a hardware that just runs? or or is it so that we actually are living, that the universe has some living character to it, a sort of, of internal creativity, which you cannot take away from nature as it is? And is it so that, that information is, in a sense, more like something which is inventive and not just uh, is the execution of some al algorithms which is lying underneath everything? 